Humans have been eating fruit, vegetables, and meat for a long, long time. So long, in fact, that what we put into our mouths has been evolving alongside us. Let's examine some foods that look completely different from what they used to. In the 17th century, Italian still-life painter Giovanni Stanchi painted a scene with peaches, pears, and some other fruit, including a super weird-looking thing in the lower right corner. It's a good thing for us that he made that particular artistic choice because it gives us a glimpse into what he knew as a watermelon. It turns out that if you hate seeds, you'd have hated 17th century watermelons. Centuries-old artwork can provide a fascinating glimpse into what fruits and vegetables looked like before we started selectively cultivating them. Watermelon, for example, came from Africa and was likely a familiar garden staple in Europe by the 1600s. The flesh probably didn't taste much different from today's watermelon, and it would have been a super sweet treat. Over the next few centuries, gardeners started selectively breeding watermelons to have more of the bright red flesh and less of the white rind. We all know what a banana looks like today, but if you peeled one of the wild ancestors of today's modern fruits, you might be in for a surprise. Let's just say that if you suffer from a fear of holes, your flight response would kick into high gear. Fortunately for us, modern bananas have been hybridized, cultivated, and domesticated into the soft, squishy fruits we all know and love. That's right, Britta. It's a banana. It's a process that started somewhere around 13,500 to 10,700 years ago in areas like Sri Lanka and China. The oldest signs of people taking wild bananas and turning them into a legitimate crop come from Papua New Guinea. And they've likely changed form so many times that it's impossible to document them all. Interestingly enough, it's possible we'll see another shift in the banana in the near future. The banana we eat today is the Cavendish, which replaced the Gros Michel in 1947, after an outbreak of the devastating Panama disease. But considering that these sterile, cloned bananas are very susceptible to a new strain of fungus called Tropical Race 4, we might be on the brink of a whole new banana, hopefully one with no holes. Today's apples are delicious, huge, and brightly colored, ranging from super sweet to super tart. But none of these apples grow in the wild, and it took a ton of careful cultivation to get those varieties we take for granted every time we go to the supermarket. But it turns out that the ancient ancestor of Granny Smith and Honeycrisp is still out there, at least for now. It's called Malus Seversi, and it seems to only grow wild in the forests of Kazakhstan, where they're eaten and spread by bears. It's one of four likely keystone ancestors of modern apples, and it's very small but very sweet. A single wild tree might have a rainbow of different colored apples, and they'll even taste different too. Malus Seversi were domesticated somewhere around 3,000 to 4,000 years ago, alongside a few other varieties that grew wild alongside the Silk Road. Unfortunately, as they began to be cultivated for flavor, size, and uniformity, they also lost some of their tolerance for things like disease and changing climates. Going back to the forests of Kazakhstan and resampling some of the ancient apples that grow there might unlock new potential for breeding hardier, still delicious apples. And we might just see another shift in this lunchtime staple. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Corn has come a long way since farmers in Mexico began selecting kernels from the biggest and best ears to plant for the next season. Those first steps toward domestication happened around 10,000 years ago, and it happened surprisingly quickly. A few theories on the domestication of corn have been put forward. The most popular is that it started as a genetic mutation of Tiacinti, a grass that has kernels that not only look similar to corn, but they can cross-breed with today's corn and produce viable offspring. Researchers have determined that there are only five genes that are different between Tiacinti and corn, in spite of their differences in appearance. Wild Tiacinti kernels are small, hard seeds that grow in long spikes of only five to seven rows, while corn has lost those hard seeds and replaced them with husks that prevent reproduction without interference. If you hate shucking a dozen ears of corn for dinner, imagine needing to shatter the kernels of hundreds of Teosinti spikes for a meal. When it comes to milestones in the development of humankind, the shift from hunting and gathering to domestication and agriculture is a pretty big one. Archaeologists and historians are still a little unclear about just how all that happened, but they are fairly certain pigs were domesticated early on, and independently in different areas. Humankind was living alongside and eating pigs around 10,000 years ago. 
and people in eastern Turkey seem to have been the first to do it. The pigs that first made our ancestors salivate were nothing like the modern pigs we today turn into bacon sandwiches. Researchers have been able to trace modern pig DNA back to their wild boar ancestors. Different pigs have been linked to different wild boar populations, but comparing 6,000-year-old skulls from pigs and wild boars shows that the domesticated versions were getting smaller and easier to handle. Just how domestication happened is still debated, but it's generally agreed that some hunters might have started realizing it was easier to keep pigs at home instead of going out to look for them. Plus, they started breeding the ones with better dispositions. Eventually, those more docile pigs created lines of piglets that were even more docile than the last, eventually giving us the pigs we know and love to eat today. Bacon! Gotta get that bacon! Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.